Hi, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Magazine's Meet the Taco Plebs. My name is Casey Carrillo, and today we have a new addition to the Bitcoin Magazine team joining us. Uh, Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello. Um, thank you, Casey, for this interview. Uh, I feel very welcome here. Um, my name is Sarah, or at Satoshi Sarah on social, if you know who I am. Um, I will basically be writing some uh, like educational content for Bitcoin Magazine, and I'm excited to be here. Yep, we're excited to have you. We definitely need more educational content, more stuff that uh, appeals to people who are just getting into Bitcoin. So it's going to be great to have someone focusing on that on the team. Um, but jumping right into our questions here, I wanted to ask you about how you got into Bitcoin. So um, my mother actually first introduced me to Bitcoin. Um, she's super cool. Uh, when she first introduced me to Bitcoin, I honestly like did not really care. I thought it was just like some adult like thing that she was investing in or whatever, like a company. And then the first time I actually got to have a use case for Bitcoin was when I was buying a fake ID freshman year of college. Um, yeah, <laughs> basically they were like, you need to pay in Bitcoin. And I was like, why do I need to pay in Bitcoin? And then that kind of led me down the rabbit hole of like, what is Bitcoin and uh, what are the benefits of paying in Bitcoin and all that. That's actually a very funny rabbit hole story. Um, I think I think it uh, really speaks to the uh, the like youth that are entering Bitcoin. Like that's how a lot of people got into it was doing things that they couldn't have necessarily done without Bitcoin. Uh, yes. And so, yeah, I think I think uh, it really when you get to use it like that for the first time, it demonst demonstrates a lot of its aspects that you wouldn't otherwise dive into late until like later on in your journey. Um, so it's interesting. Um, so next question: How does how has Bitcoin rather changed your life? So I just graduated um, from college and now I have a job working in Bitcoin. And honestly, like before, before this, I didn't really know what I was going to do because my mind was kind of all over the place. I'm like very interdisciplinary, but um, I feel like Bitcoin kind of gave me like this purpose to work on something that I was passionate about and also that would, you know, do good for the world. So um, Bitcoin itself has kind of like led me down these different pathways, especially through Twitter to find these kinds of job opportunities and also connect with some amazing people. And overall, I think um, I'm just like really lucky to have discovered Bitcoin and this Bitcoin space so early on, both in my career and also just in its genesis. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can totally relate to that. Um, the community gives such a sense of direction in terms of like who to be reaching out to. Um, it's amazing how your beforehand, at least, I don't know about you, but for me, it was like, I had no idea what, um, Thing I wanted to do that was going to impact the world, but I knew I wanted to impact the world. And uh, it was it, it was like I couldn't see anything that was really going to have meaningful impact that I could participate in until this. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's a very interesting way that uh, it draws people who want to change the world, but don't quite uh, know yet until they discover Bitcoin. Exactly. Um, I think that like a lot of students kind of in this generation automatically will like, just go towards these um, like cushy corporate t big tech or uh, like consulting firms. And mm -hmm. I think that there's just like more purpose to doing something outside of that and getting as many people as we can out of that loop. Um, you know, hopefully that can happen. No, seriously, there's too much brain power being wasted on regular corporate jobs uh, that aren't impacting the world. So, um, you yeah, know, Bitcoin pulls people out of that. And that's a good thing. So uh, I guess going off of that, what about the Bitcoin community inspires you? Um, when I first think of the Bitcoin community, 
my mind automatically goes to the Twitter community, like the Bitcoin hive mind that's on there. And, you know, while the toxicity is not really something that I admire in this specific Bitcoin community, um, what I do find inspiring is that these are all people who have really good intentions in wanting to fix the world by fixing the money. Um, I also love that everyone in this community is accepting of everyone else, no matter their like political affiliation or like opinions that otherwise do not align. Um, it's like, it's, it's pretty daunting to be in a space where uh, everyone is kind of like yelling at each other about, you know, different things. But at the end of the day, we're all kind of here because we believe in Bitcoin and we believe in what it can do for the world. And so, you know, hopefully we can expand this community to include more thinkers and different types of thinkers and people with even more different opinions because the reality is that Bitcoin is for everyone. Yep, I totally agree. Um, I definitely think there's something to be said for stepping into the Bitcoin community outside of Bitcoin Twitter. Um, it definitely offers a different perspective when you're interacting with Bitcoiners on a more personal level. Um, and it really shows a different side, a more human side to Bitcoin because Bitcoin and Twitter uh, can be represented as the community, you know, and it's it's so different when you uh, when you're interacting with Bitcoiners in uh, a more intricate way, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I like that everyone really kind of stands for freedom and um, like individual thought. Um, Sovereignty, right? Um, it's a big thing in the space for sure. Um, and so, uh, I guess going on to the next question, I want to ask you: What are you most looking forward to in the Bitcoin space? Um, I'm really interested in seeing kind of where Bitcoin development takes us and also how we can build uh, products on top of Bitcoin that kind of apply the same way that we build things on top of like Ethereum, for example. Um, I think there's a lot that the Bitcoin network and community can learn from these altcoin or shitcoin projects because uh, the reality is that people are willing to build things on ETH because it's easy to. Um, we should bring that access to Bitcoin. And uh, because, you know, Bitcoin is the most secure, decentralized kind of base layer that we should be building our next gen internet on. And so, what I'm really excited about is to see the projects that people are building on Stacks because um, Stacks is, you know, this like main chain connected to uh, Bitcoin using it as a settlement layer that allows you to um, build in the same way that you can build on Ethereum, except with this security and network and decentralization of Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you um, 100%. My favorite thing about these uh, layer two implementations like Lightning that we're seeing coming out is the ability to look at other shit coins and be like, no, we're not just talking crap. Like we built other things that work better on Bitcoin and we don't have to use your, uh, you know, centralized owned coin. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of like um, these altcoin projects will claim like, you know, Bitcoin has this like store of value use case and then Ethan, all these other projects have this other use case when really it's like, first of all, a lot of these use cases for like, like blockchain tech are kind of just redundant. And then second of all, like anything that's notable, that's cool, that is being built on ETH right now, like we can do that on Bitcoin. Um, and it would be better to do that on Bitcoin. So I think that maybe like Bitcoin is a little bit behind in terms of um, like volume and scale at what we're doing with that. But eventually, um, I think things will be built on Bitcoin. NFTs will be minted on Bitcoin and all that. Yep. Yeah, I, I personally think that Lightning is uh, is the first big step in that direction. And I think, um, yep, I, I really agree. So yep. moving on, um, how do you kind of going off that also, how do you think you and others can contribute to the Bitcoin industry? I mean, I know you just said um, basically building layer two implementations, et cetera. 
Um, but how else do you think we can further this kind of hyper Bitcoinization that uh, Bitcoin Magazine is pushing for, and pretty much everyone in the Bitcoin space is? So I think ultimately it all comes down to the community and expanding this community. Um, right now, you know, obviously, like Bitcoin or people who believe in Bitcoin and understand Bitcoin take on this very kind of libertarian stance or um, like outlook on the world, and you know, while like that's a that's a really good thing in my opinion, it's also like a minority of how most people think. And the reality is that a lot of the future generation, like like our generation, is very much like trusting of the government and um, socialist leaning, and you know, all for inclusivity and all this stuff that Bitcoiners kind of don't really care about. And I'm like, look, you know. Um, you need to be able to sympathize with these communities in order to get them on board. You should frame Bitcoin in a way that they're going to understand it to help them fulfill you know, their purposes in life. Because I think a lot of us all have the same end goal. We just have different means of getting there. And there is a lot of misinformation about Bitcoin out there, like um, environmental factors or like the privacy decentralization aspects or you know people just promoting FUD about how only criminals use it and whatnot and I just really want to help get the message out there that um, no like Bitcoin is inherently good and this is why and this is how it can you know help us all achieve this mutual goal of um, getting the world to a better place, banking the unbanked, um, you know, solving a lot of these issues um, in uh, class structure and economics that need to be fixed. No, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I think expansion of the, you know, access and s scope of who, you know, experiences Bitcoin is important. Um, and I certainly think there will be a, a sort of clash of ideology in terms of the original Bitcoin class who founded the technology uh, about or found the technology based off of their ideology versus people who will uh, be encountering Bitcoin in a totally different um, way. Uh, you know, the, the cypherpunks of, of old have very specific views on the world and, uh, you know, It'll be interesting to to certainly experience how Bitcoin goes mainstream. And as you said, there are it, it is a minority the the current cypherpunk sort of ethos. Yeah. And so it's it's going to be curious to see how um, you know it clashes with the world at large. Um, how it's kind of in, how they incorporate the world at large. How the world at large incorporates them, etc. Um, so yeah, it's, it's certainly something that um, will happen as Bitcoin uh, you know achieves this hyper Bitcoinization period. Yeah. Um, but to spring one on you that I did not write down, uh, and that we usually leave off, um, uh, leave taco plebs off on, I want to ask about your, uh, Bitcoin price, uh, prediction for the end of this year, as well as the end of 2030. Okay. Well, um, first of all, I want to say that I don't really concern myself too much with price. I'm definitely very much more on the um, like philosophy side of uh, Bitcoin and getting people to learn about Bitcoin. Um, but I, I do obviously have my own kind of notion of how Bitcoin price is going to perform. I'd say by the end of this year, I'm just I've been trying to manifest Bitcoin 100K, you know, just like in my head. So um, let's hope that that happens. I would be really happy if that happened. But, you know, obviously I have no clue what's going to happen. Um, but then again, you look at the charts and you look at those like four year cycles and, um, you know, there is some like general trend. So I think like people did have price targets at 100K to even like, 220k or something by the end of this year i'm i'm just hoping that we get back to our all-time high honestly <laughs> um yeah and then by 2030 at least at least half a million right i would think maybe more i don't know i'm purposely i think being a little bit bearish even just because i don't want to give such an 
ambitious target and let myself down if it doesn't hit that. But at, at least half a million is, is my guess. It's okay. I really don't think we'll be disappointed. <laughs> uh, I, I personally like to maintain a, a very bullish stance. So I, I like those answers. Um, half a million, though, almost bearish. So it, it better be much more, um, you know. Uh, anyways, it was a pleasure having you on here. Um, and I really appreciate your rabbit hole story. Uh, I think you have a, a good outlook on, um, you know, Bitcoin in general. Uh, and uh, we're excited to have you here at Bitcoin Magazine, certainly. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, take care, folks. Check out the uh, next episode of Meet the Taco Plebs. And uh, as always, consume Bitcoin Magazine content. <laughs>